All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. <laughs> Captain Parmenter is entertaining a visiting major who appears to be his immediate superior officer. I hope the meal was satisfactory, Major. Our company cook, Private Smathers, isn't much, but he's all we have. Actually, it smells better than anything I've had in the past few weeks. I thought you had a good cook, Major Duncan. Yes, I did, but uh, Colonel Hines took him from me. Mm. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm taking yours. The captain says, I'm not sure regulations allow you to do that, but the Major doesn't care. He needs a cook, you have one, end of story. Sergeant O'Rourke knows what's going on because the Major already had Cookie loaded up on his wagon ready to leave. James Gregory was a great choice for the Major because he has that look and bearing about him that says, I'm above you and I know it and I'll never let you forget it. He was headed for a career in the stock market around the time of the 1929 crash, but he had always been interested in acting. He spent some time on Broadway and then became a fixture on television. A lot of us know him best as the obnoxious Inspector Luger on Barney Miller. Now I'll have to write the Territorial Commander's Office for a replacement. Oh, no, 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 you won't have to do that, sir. We have got one of the best cooks in the cavalry right here at Fort Courage, Corporal Agarn. Well, sure, everybody knows that, except Agarn. What kind of scheme is O'Rourke up to? With you as cookie, you'll be in charge of buying the supplies. So? So we order more than we need. We use some at the saloon, we sell the rest to the Hakawis. There's just one problem with that idea. The other men are going to want some actual food. O'Rourke's solution to that? A cookbook. But first he needs to talk to Wild Eagle. The chief is auditioning acts for a big powwow that's coming up. From far off Catskill Mountains, him call stand up bull. <laughs> <laughs> thing happened to me on way to Hakawi camp. Ran into Big Buffalo. Turned out to be my mother-in-law. <laughs> you haven't seen Wild Eagle's mother-in-law. Uh, speaking of my family, take my squaw, please. <laughs> he stole that one from Henny Youngbrave. Uh, but seriously, tribe, about my brother-in-law. Him not lazy, him too light for heavy work, and him too heavy for light work. <laughs> That whole scene has nothing to do with anything, either in the story or in this review. I just get a kick out of watching Jamie Farr be a bad comic. I mean, pretend to be a bad comic. The boys are actually there for the tribe's meat order. Wild Eagle says, a side of beef and half a dozen squab. Jane will place that order while Agarn heads for the kitchen. Are you sure that's what the book said to do? Well, how's it going, Agarn? Eh, oh, I'm trying, Sarge, I'm trying. But there's one thing I can't figure out. Hey, what's this you mean? That's what I can't figure out. The captain comes in and wants to know about some of this ultra-fancy stuff they ordered from Jane. Oh, for a great cook like Agarn here, he, he needs special supplies, sir. Well, no, if Corporal Agarn is such a great cook, why does he need a cookbook? Uh, it's not for me, Captain, it's... It's for the fire. <laughs> he could have said a great chef is always looking for new ideas. He could have said it's his good luck charm. He could have put it on his head and said he uses it for posture. On the other hand, he was having about as much success with it as he would without it, so it probably doesn't matter. Hey, hey, Garn, what is this? What does it look like, Duffy? Looks like a recipe for corned beef and cabbage. How did a page from the cookbook get from the fire in the stove to Duffy's plate? That's classified. Now listen, Captain Parmenter is coming over here to have dinner with us, and you're going to enjoy that food if it kills you. It probably will. <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. The next one even that opens his mouth without putting food in it is going to get a very fast transfer to G-Troop in the heart of Apache territory. Incentive is a wonderful thing. By the time the captain comes in, everybody's eating quietly and apparently enjoying it. It's a little rich for me, I guess. After a week of this, the men can't take any more. O'Rourke says, fine, I'll get someone to cook for Agarn and we'll all pretend he's the one doing it. Halt! Do not draw on ground. Hey, Sparrow Eye! <laughs> Go on, Dad. 
Al Kali tried to keep America clean. So whose idea was that? Scorebird. That one probably went past a lot of people. Lady Bird Johnson was first lady of the United States at the time, and one of her biggest projects was cleaning up litter and what she called the Highway Beautification Program. I'll grant it's not a very good joke just hanging out there like that, but when you put it in its cultural context, it's even worse. All right, settle in. Crazy cattle cook at the fort. Not interested. Maybe you're interested in fat lip. <laughs> Only chief make decisions, and that job not open yet. With Crazy Cat doing the cooking, there's a very different attitude around the fort. Hey, Crazy Cat, I'll have some more of that chicken hawk with wine sauce. Pretty good meal, huh, Duffy? After choking down that stuff, Agarn dished out anything, it tastes good. <laughs> Trick a man when he's down, eh, Duffy? <laughs> you know, I'll bet if you wire the Secretary of War and let him know how things are at the fort now, he might go ahead and give you that citation for morale that he changed his mind about last episode. Hey, Crazy Cat, how about some more of that hot meat? Coming up! <laughs> Watch where you serve that food! Excuse me, Carpal. Would you pass the arrow, please? Quite possibly my favorite place to eat in the entire country is a Brazilian steakhouse in Boise called Tucano's. They serve their meat just like that, on a spit, only without the pointy end and the fire and that stuff. Uh, I guess you didn't expect to see me back this way so soon, eh, Palmer? Hope springs eternal, Major. I'll tell you one thing, Palmer. This chow is better than anything Cookie used to make for me. Used to make? What happened to Cookie? Colonel Hines took him. Will drag on me again. And how did that make you feel, Major? And you didn't learn a blooming thing from it, did you, Major? I thought he took your last cook. <laughs> yes, he did, but see, General Grisby took him from the Colonel. And the Secretary of War took him from General Grisby. And the President took him from the Secretary of War. Right now, he's back cooking at the White House. He doesn't have a cook now, so guess what? Who's your cook now? <laughs> I ask you first. Captain. Corporal Agard. Huh? He's my cook now. Well, Major, all I can say is you will definitely be getting the food that a man of your quality deserves. Take me, sir? You heard me, Corporal. We're moving out against Geronimo. It'll be at least a six months campaign. Now saddle up. We're leaving tonight. With Chef Agarn running the chuck wagon, my money's on the Apaches. So when faced with the possibility of Apaches, go have a chat with the Hakawis. But the Major is a very high-ranking officer, sir. Now, he really should stop by the Hakawi camp so that they can give him a, an Indian headdress and make him an honorary chief. It's in the manual, sir. It is? Hmm. I don't remember seeing anything in the manual about that. Yeah, well, it's in the Hakawi manual. <laughs> There's an old saying in the Army that non-coms like O'Rourke are the real brains of the outfit, and the officers are there for two purposes. To take the credit when things go right, and to pass the blame when things go wrong. Yeah. Pretty much. Here you are, Major. Mushrooms. I picked them tonight. Tonight? In the dark. <laughs> These could be poisonous. Those are the chances you take, Indian style. How lucky do you feel, Major? He'll pass on the mushrooms. Raw fish. We always serve it this way, Indian style. Cooking ruins the flavor. Just think, Major. Soon your entire troop will be enjoying this lovely, nutritious food. A baked potato should be fairly innocuous. There's a rock in here. Of course, a heated rock. I always bake them from the inside. The Major is flustered enough now that he won't think to ask how you get the rock into the potato in the first place. Ready for hot meat! Hot meat coming up! You're lucky. Aegon served with full Indian-style ceremony. Chief, I, uh, think I'm on fire. Not anymore. A few more little quirks, and the Major has had enough. Sergeant O'Rourke, what are you doing here? Well, sir, I, uh, I just came to say goodbye to Corporal Agar. Well, I've come to tell Major Duncan that he can't take Agar. I've made up my mind to be firm. Oh, you... yes, sir. Oh, wait. The Major has already decided he doesn't want to take him after all. Checking the manual, and I found a footnote under requisition of personnel. 
No personnel essential to the welfare of a fort may be transferred until a suitable replacement can be found. So, you can't take Corporal Agard. Captain Palmer, you can take Corporal Agard and... And you can keep him. But don't tell the captain. He thinks that happened because he decided to be firm. Let him enjoy it. Yeah. Well, Cookie's back and we lose our nice little setup. How come Colonel Hines let him go? Colonel Hines cook got sent back to him. The one that was cooking for the president. He got sent back for writing his memoirs, my 10 days in the White House. The following week, the White House conscripted Agarn to be their cook. The individual who hired him is currently facing court-martial for attempted assassination. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.